As we embark on this journey of great and holy Lent, we do so in repentance and prayer, contemplating our relationship with God and the state of our souls. We begin an intense time of worship and reflection, seeking the blessings and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We commit our time, our hearts, and our minds to a journey that will strengthen our faith and lead us to abundant and eternal life. On this journey, we are led by the prayers and services of the Church to reflect on our struggles and our spiritual challenges. We are called into the holiness of worship and the presence of God so that we might see our weaknesses and the aspects of our lives that are contrary to His divine and saving will. However, Lent is not a time of despair, hopelessness, or defeat. It is a season of grace and rejuvenation. From the beginning of the Triodion period, with the Sunday of the Publican and the Pharisee, to its culmination in Great and Holy Week, this journey affirms God's love for us. The commemorations, hymns, and prayers constantly direct our hearts and minds to the forgiveness and mercy that God offers to us while magnifying the importance of repentance in our lives as Christians. With hope in His grace, we sing as the prodigal son, Open thine arms, O Christ, in thy loving kindness. Receive me as I return from the far country of sin and passion. As we progress through the season of Lent, we see various themes throughout each week of Lent. On the first Sunday of Great Lent, we celebrate the Sunday of Orthodoxy, the restoration of the holy icons after the period of iconoclasm. This restoration was accomplished in the year of 843. The Empress Theodora's husband was an iconoclast, but after his death, Theodora venerated an icon of the Theotokos in front of the patriarch Methodius. The other faithful in the church did the same, venerating all the icons and considering them to be representations of the original elements, not idols. Theodora prayed to God to forgive her husband during the first week of Great Lent, and on the first Sunday of the fast, she led the way in hanging up the icons to adorn the churches. The church celebrates this day of icons to remind us on the first Sunday that our God took on human flesh, deifying it and perfecting it as an example for all of our humanity. We remember the importance of the holy icons because they are part of our holy tradition, just like the Bible. On the second Sunday of the fast, we make remembrance of our Father among the saints, Gregory Palamas, Archbishop of Thessaloniki. This divine father was born in Asia Minor and was brought up from infancy in the royal palace of Constantinople. When he was of age, Gregory left the palace and gave himself to the ascetic life in monasticism on Mount Athos. He eventually moved to Thessaloniki to seek aid for the diseases he developed because of his deep asceticism and humility. In 1349, he was made Bishop of Thessaloniki, tending to his people in an apostolic fashion for 13 years. He is glorified as an ascetic, a theologian, a hierarch, and a miracle worker who forsook a prominent, secular lifestyle to take up his cross and follow Christ. The Most Holy Theotokos, St. John the Theologian, St. Demetrius, St. Anthony the Great, St. John Chrysostom, and the angels of God appeared to him at different times throughout his life, a testament to his preeminence as the chief theologian on divinization. St. Gregory taught the Church about pure prayer, prayer of the heart. We remember him during Great Lent because this is a time in which we are all called to purify our hearts. This pure prayer is what leads us to undisrupted worship of our God where only His name fills our minds, not the thoughts of this world. St. Gregory achieved this blessed life of theosis, where we become united with God while still living on this earth. On the third Sunday of the fast, we celebrate the feast of the veneration of the honorable and life-giving cross. Every hard and strenuous work is accomplished with great difficulty, which appears especially in the middle of such work, for the effort of this performance brings with it fatigue which makes the accomplishment of the rest difficult. Without the cross, there can be no resurrection. Having arrived with God's grace in the middle of the fast, our compassionate mother, the Holy Orthodox Church, thought fit to reveal to us the Holy Cross as the joy of the world and the power of the faithful, to help us carry on the struggles of this divine fast. The Church gives us the Sunday of the Cross as a midpoint during the Great Fast, as a time to remember why we have embarked on this journey. We pray that by the power of the Holy Cross, 
Christ our God shall preserve us from the crafty designs of the evil one and account us worthy to worship the divine passion and life-giving resurrection as we achieve the course of the forty days. On the fourth Sunday of Great Lent, we celebrate our venerable father John Climacus, the author of The Ladder of Divine Ascent. St. John describes the method of elevating the soul to God as ascending a ladder. He teaches those who seek salvation how to lay a firm foundation for struggles, how to detect and fight every passion, how to avoid demonic snares, and how to rise from the rudimental virtues to the heights of godlike love and humility. John came to Mount Sinai at the age of 16 and remained there, first as a novice under obedience, then as a recluse, and finally as abbot until his 80th year. One time, his disciple, Moses, fell asleep under the shade of a large stone. John, in prayer in his cell, saw that his disciple was in danger and prayed to God for him. Later, when Moses returned, he fell on his knees and gave thanks to his spiritual father for saving him from certain death. He related how, in a dream, he heard John calling him, and he jumped up, and at that moment the stone tumbled. Had he not jumped, the stone would have crushed him. John Climacus reposed in peace on March 30th, 606. The latter is so important both as an image and as a theological book that monasteries are instructed to read throughout the course of the Great Fast. And the Church even dedicates a Sunday of Great Lent to remember this divine and spiritual treasure. On the fifth Sunday of Great Lent, we jubilantly celebrate our Venerable Mother Mary of Egypt. Once during the Honorable Fast, the priest monk Zosimus withdrew into the wilderness. He caught sight of a withered woman named Mary. Her hair was white as snow. Mary then told Zosimus that she was born in Egypt and at the age of 12 began to live a life of debauchery in Alexandria for 17 years. One day, she went to Jerusalem to enter the church to venerate the true cross of our Lord. However, some invisible force restrained her. In great fear, she gazed upon the icon of the Theotokos in the vestibule and prayed that she be allowed to enter the church, all the while confessing her sinfulness. She was then permitted to enter the church. Having venerated the cross, she again entered the vestibule and before the icon gave thanks to the Mother of God. At that very moment she heard a voice saying, If you cross the Jordan, you will find glorious rest. Mary left for the wilderness and remained there for 47 years in true repentance. She bade Zosimus to come back in one year with Holy Communion, which he did. The following year, on Holy Thursday, Zosimus discovered Mary's lifeless body and buried her. Thus, the Lord glorifies penitent sinners. The Church exalts and exemplifies Mary to the faithful during Great Lent as an incentive for repentance that brings entry into the heavenly kingdom. On this final Sunday of Great Lent, the Church offers us the life of St. Mary as a reminder that no matter how far we stray from Christ, we can always make our way back home. Indeed, Great Lent is also a holy time in which we commemorate various important events and persons who are filled with the grace of God and offer true and beautiful witness of the power of grace. We seek their intercessions, asking them to pray for us and for the gift of God's great mercy. As we experience the deliverance and healing of His grace, we too become witnesses. With divine peace in the midst of the struggles of life, we praise God for His compassion. With hope in the power of the ineffable and holy resurrection, we speak of His marvelous grace, even in the face of death. We affirm in boldness and surety that nothing can separate us from God's love. Thus, we embark on this blessed Lenten journey, seeking the grace of God with contrite and willing hearts. To experience His grace in its fullness, we commit to exalt our minds from the passions, to arm our flesh with purity, and the acts of compassion which make our words beautiful with the words of prayer. Thus we embark on this blessed Lenten journey, seeking the grace of God with contrite and willing hearts. To experience His grace in its fullness, we commit to exalt our minds from the passions, to arm our flesh with purity and acts of compassion, and to make our words beautiful with the words of prayer. We participate in this journey as a journey of sanctification, bringing us to that glorious victory of light and life at Great and Holy Pascha. Thank you.